Red nodded. My grandmother was trying to heal me. I've struggled with my sanity since I was a baby. She was a witch and she had a plan, but it blew up around her. The result was she created the big bad wolf and that poor man, the one they call Mr. Canis, was the victim, was the real victim. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He didn't mean to kill my grandmother, but he couldn't stop himself. Lucky for me, he got control of himself for a brief moment and begged me to run. You say you've dealt with your sanity for a long time, Hatta said. I know crazy and you seem perfectly fine to me. Red scanned the crowd and found Sabrina and her family. She smiled. I'm feeling much better. Objection, Bluebeard cried. We are finished with this witness. Judge Hatter snarled at Bluebeard. I say when a witness is ready to go. It's true that the wolf killed my grandma, but I don't think that he he could control himself. He was out of his mind. I know how that feels. I've done terrible things. I know it. The wolf is dangerous, but he does not deserve to die. Objection! Mayor Hart roared from her seat. Your Honor, we rest our case, Bluebeard said frantically. We'd like the jury to make its decision. Hatter shrugged. Fine with me. We'll take a one hour break to allow the jury to decide. So we don't get to question this witness either? Robin Hood shouted. Objection! Hatter shouted. I beg your pardon, said the bewildered lawyer. I object, the, the judge replied. You're the judge. You don't get to object. Robin cried. Why well, object to not being allowed to object? I find it objectionable. Hetta replied. This court finds the wolf not guilty. He slammed his head with the gavel and then prepared to leave. Your honor, Bluebeard cried. The jury has to vote on whether the wolf is guilty. You can't do that yourself. Oh, another one of your silly rules. The judge said, very well, I declare a recess. One hour. Judge Hatter got off his chair and raced through the aisle toward the double doors. Sabrina watched him pass, marveling at the fact that his neck could support his monstrous head and nose. As soon as he left, the crowd surged out behind him. The The family congregated at Briar Rose's coffee shop. Bride took a break and sat with them, but not before she brought everyone fresh muffins and steaming cups of coffee. Sabrina, Puck, and Daphne were treated to chocolate milk with whipped cream on top. The princess sat next to Uncle Jake and kissed him on the cheek. Sabrina watched Briar's fairy godmother stew with anger. They're going to turn me into a frog, Uncle Jake said, grinning. Well, I won't be the first princess in this town to be an amphibian, Briar said. What do you think Hanus's chances are? Uncle Jake asked Granny. The old woman sipped her coffee. Who can say? The judge is pretty unpredictable. The judge is a certifiable nutbag, Puck said. Granny nodded. But he doesn't seem to be in Mayor Hart's pocket either. I think they thought that having an insane person as the judge might sway things in their favor. I don't think it's turning out that way. He's proving to be unpredictable for us all. Maybe too unpredictable, Sabrina said. I think Judge Hatter is a scarlet hands whammy. Daphne said as she brushed whipped cream off her nose. Just then, one of Robin Hood's merry men came running into the coffee shop. He was out of breath and so excited he could barely speak. The jury is back, he gasped. 
everyone jumped up from their seats and followed the lawyer at a run until they got back to the courtroom. The double doors were closed and two card soldiers blocked the way. Court is in session. No one can enter, the Eight of Diamonds said. You let me in right now or I swear the two of you will get the shuffling of your life, Granny said. Befuddled, the guard stepped aside and Granny threw the doors open. Every person in the packed courtroom turned to gape at the noisy newcomers. Um, as I was saying, Judge Hatter said, has the jury reached a verdict? The man in the black cloak stood up from his seat. He held a folded piece of paper in his hands. We have, he said. There was something familiar about his voice, but Sabrina couldn't place it. Very good, read your verdict, Hatter replied. The man cleared his throat and unfolded the paper. We, the jury, find the accused guilty of murder. Sabrina gasped. Most of the audience cheered, though Sabrina heard some angry boos coming from their loyal friends. The noise bangs against Sabrina's eardrums like a wooden spoon on an old pot. She felt dizzy and sick to her stomach. Granny and Daphne looked no better. I see, Hatter said when the crowd grew quiet. Then I suppose we need to sentence him, and I tell you folks, I am going to give him a full sentence, not a sentence fragment, but a whole sentence with a verb and a noun and possibly an adjective. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a conjunction there as well. I can't stand these judges who run away with their half-baked sentences. That's how you get salmonella poisoning. Thus, I sentence the wolf to death by hanging. The crowd leaped to its feet. Some were dancing and clapping, others laughed and howled with twisted joy. Only Sabrina, her family, Briar Rose, Snow White, and their ever after friends were broken hearted. Order! Order in the court! Hatter cried, striking his head with his gavel again. The wolf will be hanged tomorrow in the center of town at noon. I believe we should make an example out of the monster. This case is over. Hatter leaped to his feet and rushed out of the room. Bluebeard, however, stood beaming proudly at the Grimms. Robin Hood and Little John pushed through the crowd to them. Their long faces spoke a thousand words of remorse. Granny thanked them for trying, then moved to the front of the court where Mr. Canis was being dragged away by a dozen soldiers. Old friend, she said. Old friend, Canis, Canis said, as his, his features now almost completely those of the wolves. We'll walk on another way, Granny said. There's no reason to worry. Canis shook his head. It's over, Relegrim. It is how I want it. He turned and allowed the guards to lead him out of the courtroom. Daphne hugged her grandmother and wept into the old woman's dress. Tears were rolling down Granny's face as well. Even Uncle Jake was shaken and pale. Puck, however, was furious. I'm going to rescue him, he shouted angrily. His wings sprang from his back and his eyes turned coal black. He snatched his sword from his waist and flew toward the door that Canis had been led through. But Granny pulled him back by his foot. No, Puck, he needs our help, old lady, Puck shouted. No, not here, not this way. If you go after him, they will arrest you next. Stay with us, Puck. I can't bear to lose another member of my family. What now? Sabrina asked her grandmother. For the first time since she had met the old woman, her granny was speechless. She seemed dumbstruck by something at the far end of the room. Sabrina followed her gaze and saw the man in the black cloak staring back at them. Bluebeard joined him and shook his hand, as did Hart and Nottingham. 
And then something so much more shocking occurred than even Canis's death sentence. The man reached up and removed his hood, revealing his identity. The man in the cloak was Prince William Charming. Snow White saw the unveiling as well. Her already pale complexion grew whiter. She bit her lower lip and a tear rolled down her cheek. She turned to Granny Rhoda. I'm sorry, she whispered. I can't be here. Snow turned and ran out of the room. Charming watched her go but then turned back to his new friends. Sabrina glared at the man like he was mold on the bottom of a toilet. She had never trusted Charming, but she had secretly hoped that Daphne was right about him. The little girl always believed he was a hero waiting for an opportunity. Even though he had come to the family's aid occasionally, Sabrina had continued to have her doubts. It had never felt so miserable to be so right. Chapter 10 on the day the big bad wolf was sentenced to die, it rained. Buckets of water spilled from dull black clouds and flooded the streets. The town's sewer system backed up and the water that didn't make it to the nearby river flowed through the tiny handlet with restraint, without restraint. Granny Rhoda wrapped herself in a rain jacket. Uncle Jake stood beside her holding an umbrella over her head. Sabina recognized it as the same umbrella Mr. Canis had held over her the day she and Daphne arrived in Ferryport Landing. At first, the children were told they had to stay home, and Granny seemed to realize they'd sneak out anyway, and so she agreed to let them come along to say goodbye, but they were not to watch the execution. Sabrina knew it might be the last chance she had to apologize to the man who had been her family's protector for almost for almost two decades. She wanted to tell him how wrong she had been about him. He had never deserved her mistrust, her distrust. The family drove to Main Street in their old jalopy. Sabrina sat, remembering the time she had a hand with Canis. For the first time, the chaos and noise of the car went unnoticed. They parked on a side street and walked up the block. In the center of Main Street, a large platform had been constructed. It had two levels. One was wide and close to the ground. The second was at the top of a tower, high above the other. A wooden beam held a noose above the second platform. A huge crowd had already gathered. Sabrina and her family moved to the front. Along the way, ever after shouted angry comments and filthy words at them. The Grimms were a blight and a menace. They were disgusting and filthy humans. They were inferior and stupid and the cause of everyone's suffering. Bluebeard, Nottingham, Mayheart and Charming appeared on the first platform. The crowd cheered their arrival and heart waved like she was in a beauty pageant. We've waited a long time for this, haven't we? She shouted into her megaphone. Many in the crowd roared back at her. Most wore the mark of the scarlet hand. Heart raised her hand for their attention and turned her gaze on the family. But trust me, people, today is just the beginning. Bring out the wolf. The crowd cheered and broke into a chant of, Bring out the wolf! Half a dozen card soldiers appeared with Canis in their midst. He towered over them, but they had swords, and Canis did not look as if he was going to put up a fight. The guards pushed him up to the second tower, and the ace of spades wrapped a noose around his thick, hairy neck. I'd like to speak to my friend, Granny said. She pushed her way to the tower and climbed the stairs. You'll be up there yourself soon. That seems to be the end of this video. I'll send more later. Goodbye.